Hey guys, today I want to show you how you can set up your Kovacs FPS Aim Trainer for Valorant and CSGO. So let's get into it. First of all, who am I? My name is Valky. I am a Grandmaster Complete in the Voltaic Benchmarks and I am also a Global Elite CSGO player and I am an Immortal player in Valorant. I have over 1200 hours in Kovacs and have been playing for over two years of aim training so I thought I'd give you guys some tips on how you can get started with aim training to improve your results in both Valorant and CSGO. A lot of people wonder if aim training is even a good thing to do in external aim trainers or if you should just focus on workshop maps in CSGO or the practice range in Valorant for a deathmatch to improve your aim. And while those things are also very good to improve your aim, I think external aim trainers have the additional benefit of being able to isolate a certain part of your aim, whether that be tracking, clicking, or micro adjustments, and really focusing on improving the parts you're bad at. But it's also a good way to warm up and really get going with your aim before going in an actual game. First, I'm going to show you guys how to match your settings in Kovacs exactly the same way as you would in Valorant and CSGO, such as your sense and your FTP. And then I'm going to cover some visual settings, how to set up the crosshair. And in the end, I'll show you a Valorant and CSGO routine that I made, some scenarios that I personally really like. When you're in the settings menu and you're not used to aim trainers, it can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes. But once you know what to do, it's actually pretty straightforward. In the sensitivity scale right here, you can select the game you come from. So for this video, it's probably CSGO or Valorant. So first of all, we'll cover Valorant. You can just select it in sensitivity skill and right here you can put the exact sensitivity that you use in valorant make sure your vertical sensitivity is locked to your horizontal sensitivity none of this you really have to touch and for the fov measurements you can also select valorant and valorant uses an fov of 103 which you'll see it's locked to this either way because you cannot change your fov in valorant now if you're a csgo player they recently added the csgo option right here so if I wanted to have my sensitivity skill to CSGO, I would just enter my CSGO sense, which is 1.05. As you can see, it adds to 19.48052 inches, which is exactly the same as if I put Valorant to 0.33. B, you can select CSGO, and it will get locked to 90 because CSGO is locked to 90 FOV. But this doesn't necessarily mean that the FOV you're playing at is 90 because CSGO's FOV system works on a 4-3 basis. So if you play at 1920 by 1080, your horizontal FOV when you select 90 on CSGO is actually closer to 106.25, I believe. But if you play 4-3 or any stretched resolution, your horizontal FOV is actually 90, but this has to do with your resolution. So let's say you're a 1280 by 960 stretch player like I am, and you want the same settings, you can keep your FOV on 90 here. Just make sure in video resolutions, you go to 1280 by 960 and you save this, and it will actually stretch your game, as you can see, the same way as CSGO will. And weapon settings is where you can change your crosshair. First of all, I don't like to show my weapon, so I always turn this off. And I also don't like the beam to shoot out when I'm uh, aiming, so I turn off the scan graphics visibility. If you want to change your crosshair, you can just click on the image next to the crosshair and you can select any of these default crosshairs. So for example, I use this crosshair right here and I put the crosshair scale to 0.8 and I made the color yellow. A very light yellow because I use a yellow crosshair in all my games and I like the consistency of that. But you can play around with this and choose your own crosshair. My video settings are actually the same as most of my games. I just play full screen 1920 by 1080 and everything on low or off. And I like to have NVIDIA reflex low latency on enabled. Visuals are actually a lot of personal preference but I will show you my visuals in case you like the way my game looks. Can just copy them or you can play around and find your own vision so for my sky i just have clear and a solid color and then for my walls i use the texture concrete board uh, in a gray tint right here it's 75 75 75 um, my scales on one roughness one metallic zero full bright one and then for my floors i like to use a pure color 
from the drop down menu and the color is 45 for the 5 where everything is the roughness metallic and full bright are on i like to have a white body because most scenarios won't even have a head so i don't really care about the head color but the body i like to be white because my walls are red and dark so it stands out a lot but if you want to change your body color you can choose anything here play around with the numbers and change it however you like now there's a lot of things you can actually hide in your interface if you would like um, by default a lot of this is automatically on i turned some of it off but because i have submitted benchmarks before you do need to leave certain things on if you're interested in benchmarking for voltaic for example so what you can turn off is player info speed hotbar and your weapon um, what you need to keep on always is your session stats your kill stats the clock the scenario name and a challenge timer. I think everything else you can turn off, but this is just the way I like it. I made a Valorant and CSGO routine for this video. A lot of these scenarios are scenarios that I personally like a lot. I think the most important skill for games like these is clicking, um, but I do think tracking is also very important. Most of these scenarios are dynamic clicking scenarios or static clicking scenarios. The dynamic ones are where the target moves and the static ones are where the target doesn't move. So the first scenario is Thin Gauntlet. In this scenario, it's basically a smooth tracking scenario. You try to be as smooth as possible with your aim and there will be different sizes of targets at different speeds so you can really practice your tracking and warm up for the day. This one takes a little bit over a minute. So I put this one two times instead of three times like the others because it's it lasts a little longer. The next scenario I chose is somewhat of a target switching scenario. This can be very useful in, in tactical FPS games. In this scenario you have to hold left click the whole time pretty much and swap between really tiny targets so you have to be accurate and fast. In a game like Valorant or CS you will often find yourself spraying at one target and another one appearing and you have to like spray transfer um, target switch to the next target and I think it's really good for I think it's really good practice for that the next two scenarios I selected are Paso and Bounce 180 for Voltaic I think these are very nice dynamic clicking scenarios because the targets move unpredictably and you still have to accurately click them especially in games like Valorant and CSGO in a lot of the fights your target is not going to be completely still especially if you're playing around with pistols a lot of people are moving around a lot and I think dynamic clicking scenarios really help with that. The next scenario I chose is floating heads timing for 100%. I chose this one because the targets are still moving but they're very tiny and the, the movement is very predictable. So it's very good at practicing shooting targets in the head that are strafing left and right. After this I chose the three static clicking benchmark scenarios. I think they're just really good alternatives to some of the older clicking scenarios that I used to do. The first one is wide wall tree targets where the, the targets are super spread out so you need to really make the large motion movements with your arm or your wrist depending on your sensitivity. The next scenario is one wall four targets where the scenario where the targets are a little bit closer together but they're also a lot smaller and you still need to make um, big movements well depending on your sensitivity with your wrist to get click between them and be fast and accurate at the same time. And then the last one of these clicking scenarios is the six sphere hip fire one where the targets are really 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 close together but they're also just as tiny as one or four targets but this is more about speed and hitting a lot of them accurately as well. There's a lot of discussion about what's more important in being a good static clicking player. I personally focus more on accuracy over speed. It's always been logical in my head. And there's a lot of people that do it that way, but there's also a lot of people in the aiming community that think speed is far more important than accuracy because you can be 100% accurate, but if someone is 80% accurate and they're way faster than you, you'll always lose the 1v1. There's some logic to that. And I think there's good points to both, but I personally like to always stay above 95% accuracy while going as fast as I can. The last one I picked is Reflex Flick Hard. Um, if this is too hard for you, you can play Reflex Flick Fair. I think Reflex Flick Hard is a nice scenario for Valorant and CSGO. 
even though most of the time you'll be focused on your crosshair placement and that will net you a lot of kills by just clicking by being at, at height. A lot of the times people can show up from angles you did not expect or while you're shooting one person another person can peek you from another angle and it's really nice if you can practice your flicks at different distances and at a really fast reaction time to get used to this. And that was it for this video. I hope it was useful for you guys and that you could learn a lot. If you did, I would appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. I also started streaming recently on Twitch, so feel free to come by and say hello. And I'm going to be preparing for the VCP Game Changers that's starting Monday, so hopefully I can do well there. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Bye guys.